All right, welcome to the first video tutorial of Lab 4. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put in a parallax observation into Skynet, specifically of a main belt asteroid. Now, this is a really challenging observation to carry out. And it's challenging because what we need to do is observe this asteroid simultaneously using two telescopes on opposite ends of the planet, one down in the southern hemisphere and another up in the northern hemisphere. Now, fortunately, Skynet is a global telescope network. We have telescopes all over the planet, but the trick is achieving that simultaneity between the two telescopes. Now, when you normally put an observation into Skynet, Skynet picks when that observation will be carried out. It balances the observability of your target versus the observability of everybody else's requests and their needs. But to pull this off, we're going to need to override the system and pick pretty much exactly when these two telescopes will begin our observation. So this requires a special level of access, a special priority level called target of opportunity, or TOO. Now, normally this is reserved just for the highest priority science observations, such as gamma ray burst explosions or gravitational wave events. But we're going to grant access, uh, not to all of you, uh, this is a very special level of access, so we're just gonna give it to one of you. We're gonna give it to your instructor, and in fact, your instructor has to request it well in advance. But once your instructor has this access, he or she will be able to put in an observation for the entire class, and you'll be able to share the data. Now, even with this level of access, it's challenging because you can say, I want the observation to start at this time, but each of the telescopes are going to have to finish up whatever observation they're doing and then slew into position. And this can take different amounts of time for the two telescopes. So to get around this, at each of the sites, we're going to put in not a single exposure, but a rapid fire sequence of exposures. We're gonna do 15 40 second exposures down on one of our telescopes at our main site in Chile, where the weather's almost always good. And then we'll give you target of opportunity access to a couple telescopes in the Northern Hemisphere, where the weather's a little bit more variable. And we'll put in another rapid fire sequence of 15, 40 second exposures there. The idea is it may take different times, different amounts of time to get in position, but since it's a sequence, essentially a 10 minute long sequence of exposures, hopefully one of those exposures overlaps in time between the telescope in the south and whichever telescope in the north carries it out. Okay, so that's the overview. Now the first step is picking the asteroid. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so what we have here is a Wikipedia list of exceptional asteroids. We link to it in the lab so it should be easy to get to. And if we scroll down to the list, we see the first thing on the list is Ceres, which is the largest of the asteroids. It's also a dwarf planet. And then we have other asteroids listed in decreasing order of size. Now we're not going to want to observe Ceres or Vesta or Pallas or some of the others at the top of the list because they're really large and hence they're reflecting a lot of sunlight and are bright. And since we're going to be doing 40 second exposures, they could saturate in the image. Consequently, we're gonna go lower down on the list to diameters less than 300 kilometers. And the first one is Davida. And we're gonna check it and see if it's observable from all of the telescopes I've given your instructor target of opportunity access to. If it's not, we'll go to the next one on the list and so forth and so on till we find one that works given this moment in time. Okay, so let's go to Skynet. We're gonna go to optical observing and 
add a new observation. Let's look up DeVita. Okay, and found it, asteroid. Now, what we could do is come down to the air mass chart. Let's suppose I've given your instructor target of opportunity access to the Prompt 5 telescope in Chile, to the Prompt Saskatoon telescope at Sleaford Observatory, and as a backup to Moorhead telescope at Moorhead Observatory. Now, what we can do is we can find these different observatories. Here's Sleaford, here's Moorhead, and then just the blue one here, Prompt, and see if they overlap in time. There are a lot of lines here, a lot of colors, and it may be a little difficult to discern which is which. So instead, let's come up here, and I'll show you how to do it using the Sky Viewer. First thing you want to do is set it to Saratololo, and set the time to now. I'm going to press this button here. And here we can see the asteroid is right on the horizon, but it's daytime, so let's move forward to sunset, and then let's go maybe another hour forward and make sure the sky is dark. And indeed, it's up in the sky, it's more than 20 degrees from the horizon. Each one of these blocks is 10 degrees. So that would work shortly after sunset, but we need to observe it from two telescopes simultaneously. So let's go to Sleaford Observatory and see if it's observable to the prompt Saskatoon telescope at that time, and it's not, uh, because the sun is still up at this location in Canada. So let's move forward in time a couple hours. Okay, the sun is now down. Let's go another hour for darkness. So it's observable in Sleaford, but is it still observable at Saratololo? So we go back and check, and it's not, it has set. If I back it up a little bit, you can see there it is, and so it's set. So this particular target is not observable from both Sertololo and Sleaford. If we come down to the air mass chart, you can see that. This one here is Sleaford, it sets, and then it rises in Sertololo. Okay, so we need to pick another asteroid. So we can go back to our list and start working our way down doing these checks. And I've already done this. And at this moment in time, um, Patientia, Patientia, yeah, that's probably it, uh, works. And I'll show you that. To the asteroid. Okay, it found it. I'm at Saratololo. I'm going to go to now, then forward to sunset. And then another hour means it's dark, but the asteroid's not up yet. So I keep going forward, there it is. But we gotta get off the horizon. So here we're at least 20 degrees off the horizon. Now, is this asteroid also observable to our prompt Saskatoon telescope at Sleaford Observatory? So I'm gonna switch to Sleaford, and we can see the sun is still up. So if I go forward, forward in time again for darkness, there it is, just coming up. Let's get it off the horizon. We want to get about 20 degrees off the horizon. I'll go all the way to here. It's kind of the optimal time. It's very low in the sky in Sleaford, but uh, definitely it's about almost 30 degrees off the horizon. Let's go back and check Saratololo. Yep, it's high in the sky, past the meridian. And let's also check our backup Northern Hemisphere site, which was going to be Moorhead. And it's indeed observable at Moorhead Observatory as well. So this works. Now what we want to do is write down the date and time. So it says May 6th, around 4 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. That's Eastern Time. Now, we're going to have to convert this to universal time uh, a little bit later in the lab. So let's just take care of that right now. 
Universal time is essentially the same as Greenwich Mean Time. And that's basically the time that England uses. And England is four or five time zones ahead of us. If it's daylight savings time, we add four. And if it's standard time in the Eastern time zone, we add five. Now, if you're located in a different time zone, it's a different conversion. But I'm going to want to add four hours right now. So that's eight hours GMT or eight hours universal time. So just write that down and tuck it away. We'll need that when we schedule the observation. Okay, now we're gonna have to put in a separate observation for each telescope. But before we do that, we should just check the weather and see if the sky is going to be clear at each of these sites at this date and this time. So also linked in the lab, we have uh, the weather channel for each site that you're likely to be given access to. I've already loaded those up here. So this is for Vicuña, Chile, which is close to Saratololo. And this is for the 5th, so we have to go down past midnight, and we see it's clear all night. And that's often the case for this particular site in Chile. The weather's good 300 out of 360 days per year. Most of the bad weather happens during their winter, which is our summer in the Northern Hemisphere. So that site checks out. Let's check out Prompt Saskatoon which is close to Saskatoon. And you can see this is the central time zone. So 4 a.m. in the east would be about 3 a.m. central time. Let's go down here to 3 a.m. and it's clear. So that's great. We have a telescope in the south and a telescope in the north. Let's check out our backup site, Moorhead Observatory. And this is Eastern Daylight Time, so um, 4 a.m., come down here to 4 a.m., and cloudy. So since it's going to be cloudy and maybe even rainy, we're not going to put an observation in the Moorhead Telescope. We'll just put an observation in for Chile, Saratololo, and one at Sleaford Observatory on the Prompt Saskatoon Telescope. Okay. So... Let's do this. We'll go back to Skynet and we'll put in the observation. First, let's check our three numbers. We like minus 12, 20, and 0 0.5. We don't need to use the advanced settings. We're going to choose our filters and we're going to use the high through filter for this observation. Save and continue. And this, let's put in the chilly one first. And I've already clicked on prompt five here. Let's suppose that's the telescope you've been given TOO access. And you can't select any other telescope at this point. In the TOO mode, you can only observe it on one telescope at a time. Save and continue. Okay, choose exposure efficiency. Now for this, you want to use the actual telescope. Don't select generic 16 inch, which will rescale the exposures. We want to do 40 second exposures on that telescope, filling a 10 minute block of time. That's gonna be 15 40 second exposures on the Prompt 5 telescope. And your instructor will have been granted target of opportunity access, so he or she will need to flag that. And it's very important that you only use target of opportunity for this particular observation. If you start using it on other observations, that's against the rules, and we have to save this special priority level for high priority science, and you could risk losing your high priority access. So only flag it for this Lab 4 parallax observation. Okay? Then we have to delay the start of the observation to that particular universal time that we already figured out. So it was May 6th, and the time 
we said was going to be eight. Okay. Last thing is we're going to want to cancel this observation 10 minutes later. So copy that and then come down to the cancel box, paste in the same time, and add 10 minutes. That way, if your site is clouded out and you miss your window, the observation won't carry out at some later date. It's useless to us if it doesn't carry out at the same time as the other telescope. So we'll want to set a very strict cancel time 10 minutes later. Okay, we're going to save and continue. I'm going to submit. So we have one of them in there. Now let's put in the other one. So again, optical observing, add new observation. Type in the asteroid again. Check our three numbers. Don't need the advanced settings. Save and choose filters. High through, save and continue. Now this one will be on the Prompt Saskatoon Telescope at Sleaford Observatory. Here it is. So select it, save and continue. Again, do not select the generic telescope. So here's the Prompt University Saskatoon and it's 15 40 second exposures. Again, select target of opportunity access. We'll put in that time. Copy, paste. 10 minutes later for the cancel time. Save. And submit. So now both observations are in the system. And what you'll want to do is check back first thing tomorrow to ensure that both observations went through and that they have at least one observation overlapping in time. The last thing I'm going to do is show you how to check that. This is a prior observation that we took. Here it is from Chile. We got a sequence of observations. This is a different asteroid. And it began at 3 24.55. Then you can check the other observation. This is at the other site. The first one here was Prompt 5 in Chile. This one is the 14-inch telescope at Dark Sky Observatory in North Carolina, and its sequence began at 3.21.25. So again, we're looking for the observation closest to 3.24.55. So coming over here to the DSO list, looking for 3.24.55. Closest thing is this one here, 3.25.11. That's only 16 seconds later. You want to find that exposure that's within 20 seconds. And these two are as close to simultaneous as we're going to get. And so uh, students in the class will want to use exposure zero from the first one and exposure five from the second one in this particular example. You'll collect your own data and then you'll have to figure out which exposures occurred almost simultaneously and your students will use those. Now if this doesn't work out, again it's a very tricky challenging observation. You may have to try it multiple times but if it doesn't work out we do have archival parallax observations in the sample directory and students can use that with their instructor's permission. Okay. That's it for this tutorial. Good luck with your observation.